road trip. It's the first time I turned the uh, camera on in the entire day. So what I wanted to turn this on for was, okay, this is a three lane highway, right? And I'm in the center lane right now. And unfortunately the sun is right in my eyes, so this may or may not show up on. But okay, so if you see on the, the left hand side here, there's a lane. And then slowly, slowly the lane disappears. It has been like that since I hit, I'm in West Virginia right now, and it has been like that since I hit the border of West Virginia. These guys must have been drunk when they plowed. I mean, literally, none of the lines are followed. They just plowed, plowed. They just anywhere, and uh, like six times in the past 10 minutes, what happens is the cars on the left and right will all of a sudden have to merge, it, like, but it comes out of nowhere. There's no, there's no explanation. You know, it's absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh boy, here we go. Looks like we have a major accident coming up. I wonder why they would have an accident. It's not like they didn't plow the roads. <laughs> I, I, that's I talk about coincidence. I mean, that must have just happened. Quiet, Kilo. That must have just happened. Quiet, guys. And I say just happened because, like, people are still getting their gear on. I guess it, I guess not. I guess people are just starting to show up. All that for one car? Tell me there's another car involved. Okay, all that for two cars. One car in a snowbank. Oh my God. But, so that's, that's what has been happening. You know, like all of a sudden the lane disappears. But I mean, you can't blame the people. Because you're like, oh, like this lane, I can see this lane is going away. It, but that's unusual because normally you're going around a corner and all of a sudden your lane is just disappearing or the tractor trailer in front of you all of a sudden pulls, just literally pulls right out in front of you because his lane ended. It's ridiculous. Oh, wow. I wonder, I wonder how that uh, legally, how that <laughs> plays out. Because, you know, clearly the, the state didn't plow properly. I'm sure there's some type of limited liability. Anyway, it's Mr. Dodge Charger there uh, burning gas. So here we are on the Blue Ridge Parkway in Virginia, and this is what you get. <laughs> I came so far out of my way to get to this goddamn spot, and it's closed. It's closed. So I'm gonna feed the dogs. I'm gonna take this opportunity to feed the animals. You guys hungry? I mean, this is not, it's not exactly busy, but well, let's see. I, I'm sure I can feed them. There aren't too many cars going here. Hey guys, hold on, you hold on, hold on. Come on. Good boy. Kilo, get over here. Kilo, come here. Time to feed these. So as you can see, this is dead. There's nobody up here. I guess I'm the only idiot that didn't know that it was closed. Guys, come here, come here, come on. Get over here, we got a car coming. Come on, up. Good boy. Come on, up. There you go. Okay, of course, as soon as I let them run around, the car comes. But you can see there's nothing going on up here. Ugh. 
back we go. So this is a road. Uh, I'm not sure of the number, the, the route number of this road, but this is the leading up to the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, my GPS is saying Parkway Drive, but that may or may not be correct. And uh, this is a very, very twisty road. This would be spectacular for motorcycles. Um, I mean, I haven't been down these roads in uh, a long, long time. Um, but they are cool. And realistically, you can't, even on a motorcycle, you couldn't go very fast on these things. I mean, they're so twisty. And who knows what's around the corner. You know, you can you can bet that somebody's you know, bicycle or you know a, a truck is parked or whatever. So I wouldn't I wouldn't risk it. But check out this view. Look at that. <laughs> That's a hell of a view. It's a shame there are no pull-offs. I've been hoping that there is a you know an area to pull off so you can <laughs> you can enjoy the view while you're while you're not while you're driving. But this is a five-mile-long road to get up to the parkway and no turnoffs, no no little uh, scenic view spots. But we, uh, we just went, got up to the parkway, to the actual Blue Ridge Parkway, and it was closed. Um, they had it shut, <laughs> shut down. Oh my god. I was hoping to do it, because um, it, it's, you know, it goes along the top of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And because it just snowed, and you can see the snow here, I mean, they got a considerable amount of snow, I'd say a lot more than we got up in uh, New England. But I guess they didn't want to clear the, the main roads, all of them. So just these little... Actually, why would they clear these roads if they're not clearing the, the actual highway? Well, the highway is not, it's not kind of important because it runs parallel to some pretty major um, roads like uh, 81 goes north-south just right next to this. And I guess if you have to get north or south, you'd take that. And that was wide open. That was perfectly clean. So it was all good. That was a policeman. Somebody probably called the... I was feeding the dogs up top there where the uh, the road was closed and a car... As soon as I let the dogs out of the truck, I mean, there's nobody up here for half an hour and as soon as I let the dogs out of the truck, a car comes, which is typical. And the dogs, you know, they're pretty obedient, but I just don't want to risk it with them. They like to chase cars and anything motorized, so... Last thing I need is to, to get a, a lost dog or a flattened dog. So, working my way back to uh, civilization. Because my scenic ride has been cancelled. Although this is nice. This is really, really pretty. It still has that like very wintry look about it. You know, the, uh, the sky. It's, it's chilly. It's six degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit. No, sorry, Celsius. That's Celsius. So, 6 Celsius. Uh, not too bad. It's probably the warmest I've seen it. Uh, I think it went up to 9 Celsius today. But the sun is going down and it should start dropping very, very shortly. And it's going to get dark. And that means that we're going to be driving around this stuff in the dark. I'll probably just try to find a place to uh, crash for the night.
long day, almost, what, 11 hours so far in the car. A lot of driving. I was hoping to be at destination well before the sun went down, but that didn't happen. No biggie, you know, no schedule. I'll catch it tomorrow. It is a chilly out there today. <laughs> it's not actually that cold, but I have been outside waiting for the sunrise. Hey guys, what you doing? Hi, hello, hello, what's that? What's that goofy camera, huh? Yeah. So right now I'm just charging a battery up and waiting for some videos to transfer so if I lose the drone at least I have some video so we can see that we're at the Eastern Continental Divide whatever the hell that means <laughs> it's a great morning it's uh, we went for a little walk on the horse trail it's really nice um, they still haven't gotten rid of their snow despite the fact that it was probably 40 degrees yesterday but it's uh, it's nice we're going to Chimney Rock later on today or just in another half an hour and see what we can get if we can get some nice shots from there but right now another minute or so before this is done downloading and then we're gonna pack up and leave more fun on the road these roads are just the best <laughs> they are really they are because these roads are so twisty and windy all these switchbacks and this would be absolutely stunning on a uh, motorcycle. We are just in the clouds right now. I can look out and it wouldn't, it, through the trees you wouldn't be able to see it on the camera, but we are coming down out of the clouds. It would be kind of neat to get a drone up above the clouds because I'm sure that some of these mountain peaks are sticking through. But yeah, this would be great on a motorcycle. I mean, these th roads are just ridiculously twisty. And this person in front of me has just decided to go five miles an hour. But look, if you look over there, you can see how it's like one hundred and eighty, one hundred and eighty degree turn after another. I sent a drone up a couple times today. We went to Chimney Rock, which was really neat. A nice view from there, but unfortunately the sun has not been cooperating because it's been kind of hazy and, you know, it just rained yesterday, so there's still a lot of moisture in the air. But we're having fun, aren't we, guys? That's right, Kayla. <laughs> oh, the whole time, the whole ride is just like that. Hey, Buster, and Buster's back and forth like a, a mosquito. All right. Look at this. What is? <laughs> It's not like you're going 100 miles an hour and you had to go over that line. This person can't hold the line here. It's too early in the morning to be drunk. Oh my god. This, um, I got some local info at the glass place, uh, Mountain Glass Arts which uh, spectacular people, awesome, really, really cool place, really neat opportunity to, uh, to put faces to the, to the voices. I've been dealing with these people, getting, you know, glass supplies for a little while and talked to them on the phone a bunch of times and it's just kind of neat to see them in person, but they gave me some, uh, some pretty cool advice. Uh, maybe about an hour and a half or so, a little bit less than that, south of uh, 
Asheville. Kilo, come on. Come here. There's uh, this bunch of falls. I never would have found this uh, by myself, so. Kind of neat. But there's a whole, I mean, we haven't even begun to see the falls yet. This is just a, the beginning of them. Come on, guys, let's go. Come here, pup. Over here, bud. Stupid selfie stick. <laughs> Go on. Buster is like a bolt of lightning and Kilo is uh, Kilo's like a slug. He doesn't want to move any faster than he has to. Where are you guys going? Come on. Beautiful woods. So uh, I'm actually really glad that these uh, that my friend at Mountain Glass made that suggestion to come hiking up here because it's really gorgeous. Right alongside the river, and there's a series of waterfalls that are really, really nice. The only downfall is that the snow is deep. I'm walking down a trail here that's been blazed by other people, but. Uh, it's like walking in sand and although this is probably only a four or five mile um, route it feels like <laughs> you're like you're walking in molasses or something and it's uh, I didn't anticipate I don't know why but I didn't anticipate it being as wet as it is and my feet are soaked put my new hiking shoes on and they are far from waterproof like three minutes in I realized that my feet were getting wet. 
which is fine. I mean, it's it's warm out. It's 40 degrees, not an issue. And I have a change of everything back at the truck, so no big deal. But for once, it's pretty uncanny. The dogs know where we're going because when we're going back, Kilo's in front of me. When we're going away from the vehicle, he's always right at my feet. So we're coming up to a second set of falls here. Um, this is the middle falls, and I guess the ones back there were the high falls. Really nice, really nice trail. It's like a morning, Kilo. So the radio stations, you know, we're in the mountains here, we're in like the Smoky Mountains, Blue Ridge Mountains, and uh, we keep going in and out of these, uh, the radio stations. It's very frustrating. <laughs> Uh, I just want to hear the news, and it's like, and today, but it's um, below freezing, and I'm going to turn this around. We're on the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia border right now, and it's been like fog. I mean, sometimes this fog goes down to complete zero visibility. I can, you can hear the radio cutting in. I can totally understand how they have these 50 car pileups because it goes you're doing 80 miles an hour and all of a sudden you can't see anything in front of you at all. So, Nantahala National Park is absolutely stunning. Um, it's actually hard to drive this road because I have to stop every five minutes to take a, a picture or to, to just show the scenery. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Well, this is definitely not a road you want to do in the in the snow though. Uh, that's for sure. That's pretty it's pretty wicked bad. Hey Buster. <laughs> He's just looking. But I mean that's that's good. I could stay here all day. I promise. I did bring a change of clothes. I'm not wearing the same clothes all all the time. It's just Every time I, I do this video, I'm I, the same jacket and hat on. It's okay. Anyway, we are at 4,000 feet in the Appalachian Mountains, and we just um, just crossed the Appalachian Trail, which is why I'm down here. Not why I'm down here, but I figured it, why why not while I'm down here. Um, we're heading down to uh, Springer Mountain in Georgia, which is the origin or the terminus of the Appalachian Trail, depending on what direction you're going in. Um, but this is like loaded with hiking trails. Uh, a lot of mist up here last night. Um, frozen mist and stuff. Uh, we were just, the kids and I were just outside for a bit um, enjoying the view and it is frigid, it's uh, below freezing. And they got a bit of snow up here in the mountains. Um, it's still here and it's been five days, six days since they had the big snow. So uh, these roads would have been absolutely atrocious in uh, in the snow, but I'll turn this around so we can see. A little bit of snow left. So we're pretty close to the border. We're still in North Carolina, but uh, Georgia is next on the list. We bypassed South Carolina. South Carolina um, is a little bit to the uh, to the east, so just save some time rather than screwing around. Just get right to where we're going. that doesn't say it all, I don't know what does. And this is absolutely stunning. Uh, North Carolina, Georgia border, it's just been like this for hour, an hour at least. It's absolutely gorgeous. Not too many, uh, not too many vehicles out either. I'll give you a little better view. 
It's just endless, endless, endless. It's, it's un unbelievable. I mean, it's just literally jaw-droppingly beautiful. And this is winter time. You know, there are no, no uh, leaves on the trees or anything like that. It's, this would all be green uh, if this were summer. So it's um, pretty amazing to imagine that it could actually be more beautiful. that beautiful valley that we saw in the other shot this uh, we've descended into the valley and this is the fog that you saw sitting you know just sitting in the valley it gets pretty thick at times but then it thins out to nothing and then gets thick again Somewhere in Georgia. <laughs> We've been driving for a long time and I don't really know if, uh, if we're on the right road or not. But it's beautiful. It's really pretty. Right guys? My GPS doesn't even give me directions anymore. <laughs> she stopped talking to me. I'm like, uh... And then halfway here, which this is like, I've been off the main highway for about 20 miles now and I still have like another 10 to go it's telling me it's gonna take an hour to get 10 miles so just to give you an idea how these roads are but uh, it's just it's I do remember somebody saying hey wait a minute I took uh, Google Maps took me somewhere and it like was nowhere where they were supposed to be so I'm like ah uh, wait a minute because uh, this is Google Maps that I'm using to uh, to get me to Springer Mountain, the head or the uh, terminus of the Appalachian Trail. I'm like, ah. So now, doubtful. It's doubtful. But I'm going to try to stick this out the window and give you, a, give you an idea as to how pretty it is. I mean, the countryside is gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. I have two GPS's going right now, and neither one of them is really doing doing much. Uh, my, uh, I was listening to Pandora up until about, well, until I got off the highway, and uh, it just, it, it, there's nothing up here. There's no service. I have no idea where this is, so this should be very interesting. Okay. I think I'm going the right way. That's the first sign that I've seen. The first signs that I've seen that give any indication and now it becomes a dirt road. That's why they're telling me it's going to take an hour to get there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see how this goes. Oh Jesus. <sighs> well, one would imagine, hey, what are you doing? One would imagine that this is the way. So let's see, let's see how it goes. Update to follow. Maybe this will give some perspective here. This is this is insane. I don't know if you can see out there, but this we are on like the top of this mountain. Supposedly, well, it's not supposedly this it Springer Mountain. The right Springer we have yet to determine, but. Uh, these roads are so ridiculously tight, muddy, bouncy, but you can see the beautiful ridge on the other side. It's pretty nice. I mean, picturesque, but it's very nerve-wracking because I don't know if this is right. I have no idea. There are all these guys in the truck up here, and it's hunting these dogs. I don't know. This is, yeah, like, what's going on? Oh, man. Here it is. Unbelievable. I mean, this ride up here made it look like, uh, made Mount Washington look like a joke. I mean, it was absolutely, I'm assuming this is the top. There's a sign just over here that I'll show you in a second that says uh, Appalachian Trail is just up here. 
by a little bit. So I guess the official start is up here, but I think the, the road continues on. I don't know if it keeps going up or what, but I'm stopping here. So you can see behind me, Springer Mountain, Maine. And this is, you know, they have the little sign up that says Appalachian Trail. So this is the right, right place. And the dogs are happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> but uh, here's the southern terminus of the AT. One mile in that direction. And you can see there's a, in this tree over here, there's a, a blaze. So this is the AT. The Appalachian Trail. <laughs> wow. It's kind of cool. I mean, I've done, I myself have done parts to, uh, um, through Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, New York, Vermont, but um, never down here. So here we are. But I mean, technically I'm not, I'm not walking this. And as you can see, I'm the only person up here. Well, only vehicle up here, up this high. So what I'm going to do is, uh, there's a nice open space here. I see a lot of blue sky, so I'm going to send the drone up and uh, see what we can see. I've been having trouble with the batteries. The, um, the batteries, I guess they, they're cold, so they're, they're dying very quickly. Like, I mean, I'm talking 30 seconds, 60 seconds. So just enough, I get it up a few hundred feet and then it dies. It's, um, it's a pain. I'm not even putting a tracker on the drone because if it gets lost here, it's gone. I'm not even going to look for it. So hopefully we won't have a flyaway. So more soon. Keel out, get over here. So that one truck that I uh, I saw on the way up here just went further on up. But he that was I'm pretty sure that was the hunter with his dogs. That so my truck is running because I am charging batteries right now. So we're gonna go pick up the drone and go over here, give it a launch. Surprisingly, there is no view here. You know, all the way up on either side, there there was a hell of a view. And now we get to the top, supposedly, and there's no view. I mean, the trail the trail looks okay. I think we might uh, we might go for a walk. It's only it's a it's a, a mile. You know, it, I know it's probably icy and slippery, but. We'll see how it goes, but for now, let's see how this goes. Okay, there we go. Getting nothing from the camera. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. find some shade here. So that one truck that I, uh, I saw on the way up here just went further on up. But he, that was, I'm pretty sure that was the hunter with his dogs. That my truck is running because I am charging batteries right now. So we're going to go pick up the drone and go over here, give it a launch. Surprisingly, there is no view here. You know, all the way up on either side, there, there was a hell of a view. And now we get to the top, supposedly, and there's no view. I mean, the trail, the trail looks okay. 
I think we might uh, we might go for a walk. It's only it's a it's a, a mile. You know, it, I know it's probably icy and slippery, but we'll see how it goes. But for now, let's see how this goes. Okay, there we go. Getting nothing from the camera. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. find some shade here. Go bud, go! Kilo, come on! Uh, this is how it's going to be again. <laughs> he's he's gonna be behind the whole way and Buster's up always up front. But this is um this is the Appalachian Trail. It's a little bit snow covered from I mean they Christ they didn't get they got snow. Today is like Thursday. They got snow almost a week ago. And it's still uh still here. Come on, bud. I would have expected it to melt, to have melted. So I figured we're all the way up here. Why not have a look? Eventually, Someday I would like to go to the very um, to do the both uh, both do the whole trail. It's about 2,100 miles from uh, Georgia to Maine. Kilo, come on! It takes a little bit of time though, and that's the one thing in this life that we don't have is a lot of time to do everything. So we have to choose those things that we're going to do. Now, the, One of the things on my mind right now is how the hell I'm going to get down this mountain. <laughs> because getting up here was a real pain in the ass. Come on guys, let's go! We had quite a hike yesterday. Okay, no more snow. That's just gonna be mud. Come on guys, let's go! <clears throat> Seeing as that I'm the only car up here, I think it's safe to assume that I'm probably the only person up here. Other than that hunter. Kilo! Let's go! Usually I'll, I'll put him on a leash. He starts getting defiant like this. Starts hanging back further and further. Like he doesn't care. Well, he doesn't care. And then I put him on the leash. I've actually dragged him before. He's like a defiant little child. Let's go! But... If he does that more than once, then that's very simple. He just stays in the car or stays at home. You know, you throw your temper tantrum once and that's it. All done. 
I don't know what the camera's picking up, but beautiful mountains out here. This is the, uh, what is it, the Chattahoochee State Park or National Park? I have to confirm that. Well, I brought my drone with me, and I've been stopping along the way. Sometimes you kind of ruin the moment when you're trying to, you know, be concentrating on uh, photography or videography. It's everything you, you look at, you just can't appreciate it because you're always thinking, oh, that would make a great shot. You know, if I set it up like this or if the sun was was over here or over there and you just rather than just looking at it and saying wow that's beautiful so I got a couple minutes about five or ten minutes of drone footage from the top of here you know it's not that spectacular it's not like the Rocky Mountains but it's still very nice very beautiful this was all hazed in this morning thick thick fog down in the valley and uh, fortunately it cleared out this is gorgeous I, I'm the only person on top of the mountain good boy go on I hope this camera angle is not too off see worrying about the camera again come on bud come on Buster Well, I'm going to kill it now. I'll turn it on again when we get to the top. No use in listening to me just ramble. Come on. Attention hikers. Bear incidents. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Sleeping on top of a mountain isn't always ad advisable anyway. The caretaker when present in this area is available for any questions you may have. I have a question for you. What's the capital of North Dakota? Oh, here it is. We're at the top. Actually, this is a side trail just going down. It's absolutely dead silent. It's beautiful. The uh, actual top is just over the, the ridge here, but there is a group of people, believe it or not, a group of guys hiking at the top. So, figured we'd uh, go a little bit further away, kind of hang out. It'd be nice to sit there and just, you know, by ourselves at the top. But I'm, I have a feeling they're going to be there for a bit, so unfortunately. But, this is it, start of the Appalachian Trail. 2,100 miles in that direction is Maine. The goofy stick. Whoa. Gonna catch me falling. So we're returning from the top of uh, Springer Mountain in Georgia. Georgia. And much to my surprise, there were four or five people up at the top, just hanging out. They hiked up from the other side, and they're just going a couple miles in this direction. So they're just doing kind of a, you know, a short weekend trip. And we are just doing a short day trip. <laughs> the drive up here took longer, took longer than... Uh, hiking from the, the lot up to the top. It's a real shame that you can't see. I mean, in the summertime, you wouldn't be able to see anything, but off to my left, it's absolutely gorgeous. You know, just great, great view. I tried to get a couple pictures from up there, but again, it's kind of a pain in the ass when you get other people around and the dogs are trying to get into their food and stuff, so we just left. 
But the real uh, the irony is that as I was up at the top of, uh, of the mountain, just getting up to the top, had hiked up there, the person that inspired me to do this most recently sent me a text, and you know who you are, and said, uh, I'm, come on, Kilo, let's go. I'm, uh, can't remember how it was put, but I'm doing what this person wanted to do. And the funny thing is that this person is the person that inspired me to do this. I mean, I've done similar stuff to this in the past, but I haven't done stuff like this recently. And I really, uh, I really need to do this more. Because we all get to the point in our lives where we stagnate. And we become complacent with all the garbage that life has thrown at us. And we lose sight of the the coolness that we used to we used to value. Kilo, come on! Unbelievable. It gets to be annoying after a while when he he keeps doing this. You know, he gets so far back. Let's go! Come on! He doesn't. He won't walk in front of me I, for whatever reason he does he likes to be behind but um, let's go you want to get on the leash let's go and it's easier for the both of us if he's not on the leash but again live and learn if he keeps doing this stuff then he stays in the car So that's enough uh, philosophical <laughs> pondering for the for the time being. I'll spare everybody the rest. But uh, thanks for the inspiration. So instead of the goofy selfie stick, I'm on the goofy uh, headset. This thing is probably pointing towards my ceiling. I'm sure it is. But so there's the view that I was talking about before, with the precipitous drop off into oblivion. <laughs> on the other side. I mean, we're going I don't know, five, ten miles an hour and it's gonna be like that the whole way down. This is actually a good section of the road compared to some of the steeper, I mean some of the steeper parts are now they're muddy so I'm just worried about the traction going down not being able to stop. Oh. So in, in my infinite wisdom I've come to the realization that uh, one of the things that brought me down here, other than adventure, was I picked up uh, some glass supplies in uh, North Carolina. And those glass supplies are now in the back of my truck. <laughs> um, I'm hoping they're all in one piece. I mean, I know they were packaged pretty, uh, pretty nicely, but hopefully after all the bumping and jarring of this road, they will be okay. But I like to check it out, man. Oh, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's impossible to drive and look at the same time, unfortunately. So, if I were a passenger in this car, then it would be very interesting. But everything worked out. The, uh, the winds were not too high at all. I'm hoping I got some good video. I've, I've already transferred it over off the, the drone. So if the drone is lost, at least I have the footage. Um, but it wasn't windy, which is something that I was very pleased with. I was able to get the drone up uh, maybe about 1,000, 1,500 feet above, above the top of Springer. So however t uh, high that is, I don't know. I'm going to have to look that one up. But uh, I'm sure it's not incredibly tall. Uh, for the rest of the day, the only thing on the agenda, I mean, it's getting late. It's almost uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, late compared to, you know, the time that we set out on the road. We set out pretty early. So it's a long day. 
but we need to uh, find out where we're going to stay tonight and find out what we're doing tomorrow. So that'll take up uh, the rest of the day, and it is definitely Miller time, I tell you that. It's been a long day. We spent a lot of driving. This road is very uh, nerve-wracking. So I'm looking forward to finding out where we're staying. Go guys, I'm gonna get some water now. I know that you guys have not had any water for a bit. Okay. All right. All right. Kilo, get over here. Where are you going? Jesus Christ, man. Oh man, it's like dealing with a three-year-old. Buster! Here you go. Here, guys. Here. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Kilo, where are you going? Good boy, Buster. Good boy. Kilo drinks like a cat. I swear to God, it's unbelievable. It's the most bizarre thing. Buster! Let's go! Good boy. Good boy. Here, have some more water, bud. Come on. Let's hear it. Come on. No more? No more? Okay, no more. Alright, guys. Let's go. Back in. Let's see if we can't get off this mountain before it goes dark. Ready, 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 come on. Up, up. Good boy. Yeah. And of course Fatty needs a needs a hand up. <laughs> oh, boy. Always an adventure, guys. I thought it would be interesting to uh, put the camera on for these roads. I mean this is insane. It's like one 180 degree turn after the next. It's just all over the place. This is, um, we're going along, we're in like the Tennessee River Valley. They have these gorges that are dammed up and uh, it's just, uh, I don't even know why these roads exist. <laughs> it's. It, they honestly, this is ridiculous. Like, why would someone see this this area and go, "Yeah, let's put a road through here"? Because this is, I guess, what used to be the the you know obviously far below. I mean, very far below because some of these gorges are incredibly deep. But you know, this kind of sort of follows the contour of you know I guess what used to be the river. Um, but again, it doesn't make any sense because th this is just some, I mean, it must have been absolute misery to, to build these roads. Speaking of misery, 
last night was probably, uh, well, I can't say it was like the, the most miserable ever, but it was not fun sleep. Where we were staying, like all these friggin' weird noises, and, and who cares? You know, I, I mean, I usually can sleep through that, but the dogs, every time the dogs heard some weird noise, like it sounded like somebody was scratching on the door, and then it just, then these like truck noises, it was near a main road. Unbelievable, it was just one thing after the next, and the dogs kept moving around and kept, you know, waking up. I kept waking up, so I don't think I slept more than 20 minutes at, at, in a stretch and just kept waking up. Oh man. You know, once you wake up, can't go back to sleep, takes you 45 minutes to try to go back to sleep, and then all over again, the, then the dogs wake up, and it just over and over and over. So. I'm holding this camera with one hand while I'm driving. I don't know what it looks like. Uh, I don't even know if, if I put it, wear it on my head. And not only do I feel like a doofus, but uh, I, I think it's point. I think it points at like the, the, you know, too far up. I think it's getting uh, and not looking out the window is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, the thing that the real bummer is that you wake up in the morning after a crummy night's sleep and you feel, you know, right off the bat you feel like garbage. So. That's kind of where we are right now. Um, so we crossed over from North Carolina into Tennessee, or back into Tennessee. It's like the eighth time I've been back and back and forth between Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia, and um, you know, trying to stick to the national parks. This is the Smoky Mountain National Park, and it kind of goes around the outskirts of it. There are no real roads that go through it, um, not from where I am, at least. So I figured we'd do the scenic drive, and honestly, as soon as I got on this road, I was like, I don't want to be here, because it's this is a motorcycle road, and it's for somebody who's really in the mood to do this, but in a car, it's not the best. It's kind of a pain in the ass, you know, back and forth, back and forth, like over and over and over again. So, but at the, the point at which I got on this, I was like, I couldn't, I had no other choice but to continue on. You know, so I said, ah, whatever. And you know, it's been pretty. It's been neat. Some nice views and stuff, but I, today, right now, I could have done without this. <laughs> I didn't need this. And the dogs are, the dogs are weird today too. I, probably because they got a crummy sleep. You know, I mean, they've just been all over the place. Um, they're kind of out of sync with everything. We've been pretty good up till now, but I mean, you know, we've been on the road for a week. Yeah, the river is really, really low. And we just came from where the big dam uh, is, or one of the big dams. And this is upstream from the dam. But I wonder why, I mean, that's like literally like 25 feet or more below, you know, the high water mark on that. So for some reason, I'll stick it out the window so you can see. But that looks really, really low. I wonder why. Could it be drought? I wonder how quickly that fills up. Maybe they drop it in the winter and raise it again, you know, in the spring when it's, uh, it's the water is flowing again. But 